In this final build video, we're going to finish this tool head install. We're going to install the electronics and wrap up any miscellaneous parts and get the LH Dingo ready to push some plastic. We'll start by installing our Z bump stops and end stop switch. All four of these use an M3 by 12mm socket head screw and four 3030 M3 drop nuts. I find it easier to preload the screw and the nut onto the part as shown here and then simply wiggle it into place. When tightened the drop nut will be held in place securely. The lower left bump stop has two heat press inserts for the end stop. Ensure that you use the two small square ones for the top of your axes and the larger of the three remaining for the lower right. You can never remove the temporary bump stops as the rail is held secure. Moving on to the Z end stop. If you're using the Fizer kit, you'll need to desolder the wires from your end stop. And feed the wires in through the back of the plastic part. You can then resolder them, as shown here. and then push the end stop switch into the plastic part until it sits nice and flush. You may need to file a small amount of material away from the side of the switch, depending on your tolerances. We can now install two M2 by 8mm button head screws to hold the switch in place. These don't need to be tight, just wind them in all the way. The end stop switch is then installed to the bump stop that we installed earlier. We'll do this using two M3 by 12mm button head screws with a washer on each. For safety reasons, we'll set this to the highest value for now. We can always adjust it later. Now we'll get started assembling our tool head. For this we'll need the following components, two 5015 blower fans, one 4010 cooling fan, a hot end, our extruder, two M3 long heat press inserts, nine M3 short heat press inserts, one M3 hex nut, two M3 by 12 button head screws, four M3 by 16 button head screws, 4 M3 by 20 button head screws, 4 M3 by 40 button head screws, 2 M3 by 8 button head screws, and 2 M3 washers. We'll start by installing our heat press inserts. I'm going to overlay the CAD model so you can see more clearly where these go. The two long ones go on the top for the extruder mounting. We can now install four shorter ones for the fan. The three blower fan ones. And finally, the two lowermost ones. You benefit from holding the high end at a 90 degree angle here. You may also benefit by adding a screw from the back to align it and pull it backwards.
and that will conclude the installation of the heat press inserts. Now we can install the tool head to the printer. Before we get started you'll want to take your probe wire with the end stop switch attached to the end and cut off the end stop switch. You'll then want to strip around 20mm of cable. Feed this cable into the lower half of the tool head and install two magnets on each side ensuring that they're all the same polarity. Now we can install the tool head body to the printer's carriage using the two M3 by 40mm screws at the top and M3 by 8mm screws at the bottom. These can be a little fiddly to get in place. Once this is done we can install our hot end. I'm using Fetus Dragon here. Thread in your heater and thermistor cables and then screw the hot end in place as shown here. Next we'll install our fan spacer and tool head fan using four M3 by 16mm button head screws. Now we can install our extruder. I'm using the Sherpa here, but you could use the Orbiter or any other extruder that fits. First add your piece of PTFE tubing, and then install the extruder using the two M3 by 12mm button head screws. And finally we'll install our two blower fans using four M3 by 20 button head screws. Paying attention that the top screw of the left fan is fed from the inside with that M3 nut on the outside. Onto the fun part, installing the belt. There are a few heat press inserts to install here. Two short ones in the bottom and two long ones at an angle at either side. I've included a screenshot of this on screen. We'll start by folding the belt back on itself, ensuring that the teeth engage with each other. Don't worry about the excess, we can trim that later. With the end of the belt at the folded point pressed firmly together, Slide it down into the slot until you see the inside of the belt through the middle hole. You should be able to see that here. I used an allen key just to make sure that this was pushed all the way around. Once you're confident that it's all the way in, install an M3 by 16mm countersunk screw into the hole. and give the belt a good pull to ensure that it's engaged around the screw. And cut off the excess belt, leaving around 10mm. Next we'll need the other part of the tensioner mechanism, with a long heat press insert installed. For demonstration purposes I haven't shortened my belt, however you should at this point. I line the open end of this with the end of the belt, ensuring that the teeth are meshed correctly. And slide it into the tensioner mechanism. We can then wind in the 40mm screw from the other side to tension our belt. Now we can secure the tensioner to the tool head 
these into 40mm button head screws with an M3 washer on each. You don't need to worry about tensioning the belt yet, and if you haven't already, remove any excess, leaving around 10mm of extra belt. There are two additional screws to install that clamp the tool head against the rail cart and improve rigidity. Install these with thread locker and tighten them to keep an eye on the gap between the tool cart and the carriage. You don't want to over tighten these to the point where they bend the plastic, but they do need to be semi tight. These should be M3 by 12 socket head screws. And that will conclude the tool head assembly. Next we'll move on to assembling the auxiliary fan. This was quite tricky to capture on film, so I've included a CAD model to assist with this. We'll start by gluing the fins to the top part. You can use three pieces of filament in the three holes to align these two parts, and then simply cut it flush. Next we'll install a short heat press insert, and then two short heat press inserts to the sides of the fins. Using an M3x12 button head screw and a washer on either side, secure the flap to the lower half of the fins and then install a spring on either side. Next we can bring in our fan, followed by the lower joining bracket. You'll want to repeat all of these steps for the other fan. Now you can fix the two fans together using an M3x12 socket head screw. Ensure the faces of the fans are aligned. Next we'll install four M3x45mm socket head screws through the fans and the lower fixing bracket. And then each of these will have a washer and an M3 nut. And finally, install four M3x12 socket head screws to the front of the fans, along with four 2020 T nuts. The finished assembly should look like this. Ensure your T nuts are flat and slot them into the back of your X beam. Ensuring that the fans are aligned with the bed, tighten all four of these screws down. And that's all there is to installing the auxiliary fans to the gantry. The brake beat board on the LH Stinger is a breakout board used to attach our electronics box from episode 1 to the main printer body. We'll start by installing a short heat press insert into the lower half of the breakout board box and then 8 more into our standoffs. Next we can install the breakout board using 5 m 3 by 10 kersunk screws and the 5 standoffs from earlier. And finally, install our 3030 M3 T-nuts to install it to the frame. You can do this with an M3 by 12 mm socket head screw on top and an M3 by 30 mm socket head screw on the bottom. You can then attach it to the frame, following the orientation shown here. The lid then drops down and installs using four of the M3 by 10 countersunk screws. Due to the differences in everyone's builds, we won't be showing the entire wiring process, however we will show the wiring diagram on the screen, along with some suggested final routing up. The optimal wiring routes are highlighted on screen. Once you're happy with your wiring and it doesn't look like this, install the lid to your breakout box. Now you can install your three wiring harnesses from your electronics box, and that completes the build. As a disclaimer, this kit was provided free of charge by Fizek for research and review purposes. However, they have no input in the outcome of this or any videos on the channel and will not see this video before you. Thank you for watching and if you don't want to miss the next leg of our Stinger journey, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications and I welcome your comments and feedback on the videos and projects. If you want to get your own LH Stinger kit, you can find them at the links in the video description as well as several useful resources such as the LH Stinger GitHub and Git Discord server. I want to thank Lima Hayes, the creator of the LH Stinger, for his cooperation and guidance, and our official filament sponsor, Filamentive, who have provided us with a huge batch of filament for this and many of our next projects.